solid all the way through. And even the fifth member of that group, Devin George, the guy that uh, you have trouble remembering, is giving them a solid, consistent effort, floating around the perimeter, knocking down jump shots, and playing a little defense. All five Lakers starters in double figures. Far cry from years past. Ben Wallace, Tayshawn Prince, and Eldon Campbell are up front for new Pistons head coach Larry Brown. Hamilton and Phillips provide the firepower from the perimeter. Well, that's an important point. You, you New coach Larry Brown. It's going to take Larry Brown a little bit of time to put his stamp on this team. One guy he does not have to worry about is Ben Wallace because this guy brings it every night. His scoring average is up, and you know he's going to give you the physicality you need to compete in the NBA with it. Block shots and rebounds. That's what Ben Wallace does, and he does it as well as anybody in the game today. Yeah, that scoring average is up. To, uh, double figures for the first time in his career. Rebounds down a little bit to 13.3. Still good enough for second in the league. And we know about the block, but how about the steals? Two and a half a game. He's in the top five in the league there, too. Well, he's been the defensive player of the year in the past, and he understands passing lanes and how to get position and how to hold position on the defensive end. And he knows the other team's plays and where they're going to try to attack. Certainly tonight, he realizes that Mr. O'Neal will be getting the ball a few times, and it's part of his responsibility to try to defend against Shaq, and, and that's a tall task, obviously. But Ben Wallace will try different things against people like Shaquille O'Neal, and one of the things he'll try to do is step into the passing lane. And there is Shaquille O'Neal of all of the controversy at the beginning of this year between he and Kobe Bryant, the war of words. It seems to have taken a distant back seat as the Lakers have come out. They've played well together, and they've won basketball games. I think a lot of that, Mark, it, it, it has to do with the presence of Gary Payton and Carl Malone because those two guys, seasoned veterans, and everybody realizes that they took fewer dollars to come to L.A. with the one intention of winning a championship. And L.A. obviously lost the championship, didn't didn't get to the finals last year, and they want to get back, and they know that that is the goal for this team this year, and they're willing to uh, do what it takes. How about that courtside fan trying to single out a little inferiority complex with Devin George saying, you don't belong <laughs> in that lineup. How about that? He's playing well, like he belongs, he though. He is. He's playing very good basketball, as I mentioned earlier, for the Lakers. And he doesn't need the spotlight. He's content just to play good basketball and to win, and that's what the Lakers are doing. Look at Carl Malone. Uh, you know, that that's an amazing story, too, because I felt coming into the year that Carl Malone would have the the biggest problem making adjustments and he's he's just fit in seamlessly he, he it's been very smooth for Carl Malone his numbers are down a little bit but he's playing good basketball and and uh, he, he understands he doesn't have to be the show here and we're underway with the Pistons controlling the opening tip Tayshaun Prince handling out front against Devin George and in the passing lane was Kobe Bryant to break it up it's imperative for the Pistons that Tayshaun Prince scores. Even though in, in Friday night's loss to the Lakers, the Pistons got a lot of points out of Chauncey Billups. They can't expect that again because the Lakers backcourt does a pretty good job defensively. Peyton and, and Bryant are both terrific defenders. Working the offensive glass, Ben Wallace puts back the miss of Eldon Campbell. You can't forget to block out Ben Wallace. You know he's always going to be on the boards. And then we talk about stepping into the passing lane. Ben got a piece of another one. He's out there harassing Kobe Bryant. They give it into O'Neal, guarded by Eldon Campbell. Gets in the lane, fakes and banks it home to tie it up. You know, Eldon Campbell played with Shaq in L.A., understands Shaq, but that doesn't mean he has a leg up on <laughs> being able to stop him. When the big fella makes his mind up, there's nobody in the game who can stop him. Tayshaun Prince gives to Ben Wallace. Carl Malone guarding him. Ben going for the turnaround. What's going on here? Well, that's an area of his game 
It has improved. He's worked, obviously, on his shooting, and he's gotten a green light from Larry Brown to take those shots, uh, whereas in the past, he wasn't as free to take that those kinds of shots. And, and when you have confidence and you, you know that your coach is behind you, you tend to make a few more. Jack misses the turnaround. Rebound, Ben Wallace. Well, that's what they want. The Pistons want Shaq to do is take that little fall away, takes him out of rebounding position. Eldon Campbell fakes up Shaq. Shaq blocks the shot, but a whistle. Jess Kersey says Shaq got him. See, that that was it was a, a good idea by Eldon Campbell, but a, too slow developing. You'll see it here. Or you'll see Ben Wallace taking that turnaround jump shot. Looking like a shooter, actually. But he really did. On the play where Campbell defiled, he waited too long. He had Shaq off balance, and he waited until Shaq was able to get his balance back. So Campbell converts from the line. Gary Payton walking it up to the Lakers. Phillips guards him. Tayshawn Prince is guarding Kobe Bryant. Tayshawn Prince is about... 6'8", six, 6'9", six, but he's got such long arms that he can stay a couple of steps away from Kobe Bryant and still get in his face on the jump shot. How about that one? Nice little touch pass from Malone to Peyton, who hits the jumper. Hamilton into the lane. Oh, he's so tough, slashing in there. Well, that's his game. That's vintage Rip Hamilton. He will move without the ball. He's not that good creating his own shot off the dribble, but he will move without the ball as well as anybody in the league, and as long as they're looking for him, he can catch and shoot in that mid-range game of his and make, make shots and, and put up numbers. Carl Malone, way out at the edge of his range. Pulls the Lakers back within one, coming up on three minutes gone. In the first quarter. Well, we're seeing that more and more from Carl Malone. He realizes that those are the kinds of shots that he's going to be able to get in this offense. Eldon Campbell hits the outside jumper. Well, Eldon Campbell has got to hit that shot to keep himself in the ball game. really. Uh, Shaq is not going to come out and defend him out there. Kobe getting a lot of booze on that touch as he's gotten from time to time on this trip around the league here. Eldon Campbell picks up his first personal. See, Eldon Campbell got caught in the torture chamber there. He, he allowed Shaq to get deep position and hold it. And it, there is absolutely nothing you can do to foul him in that situation. A double Shaq immediately open is Malone, who cut right to the basket. Nice look. A double team on Shaq, which the Pistons really have to do a lot. And Shaq has become... A very good passer out of the double team. Carl Malone just moved to the open area, which was right underneath the basket. Got the pass and laid it in. Ball moving around the perimeter for good Detroit. Move. Wide good. open on the three. Prince can't hit it. And it'll be a loose ball foul on Eldon Campbell, his second here in the opening minutes. So he's going to have to go to the bench. Yeah. Let's take a look here at the double team. By the Pistons on Shaquille O'Neal. Ben Wallace comes over to double. Nobody drops down to pick up Carl Malone. That's too easy. It's too easy, especially if Shaq is actually looking to pass, and he does. Mehmet Oker comes in to replace Eldon Campbell. It, it's got to create a situation. All this talent on the floor for the Lakers where you almost can't double-team anybody. That's true. You really can't. You, you, you might think about leaving Devin George alone but he's a pretty good spot up jump shooter. What a block for Wallace! That was a great move by Shaq and an even better block. And then missing the layup on the other end is Billups but a whistle coming in and Jess Kersey said hey Gary Payton you got him on the head. <laughs> Gary Payton doesn't, doesn't like it one bit either. But he's not going to get anywhere with Jess Kersey. Take a look. Nice move by Shaq. He's got Mehmet Okor. Ben Wallace from the weak side goes up and swats that. And that sends a message to Shaq. That doesn't happen very often. And Shaquille O'Neal has got to think that every time he goes in for a little short jump shot, 
that Ben Wallace is in the neighborhood. Yeah, Wallace going to be able to, he hopes, not have to guard O'Neal, just come yeah. on out on the help. And he'll be much more effective, obviously, coming in off the weak side and on the help defense. But I, I just can't see Mehmet Okor being able to do anything with Shaquille O'Neal. Peyton, it's his second jumper of the day. We're tied at 10. Well, what happened there is that Gary Payton got a little riled up being called for a foul he didn't think he deserved, and he took it out on the Pistons down the other end. Evan Oker got his own miss. Kobe Bryant commits the reaching foul as first. And the Pistons will be charged their first time out here in the first quarter. It's been a good one so far, as expected. The Lakers and Pistons are tied up at the Palace. Teams being able to match up with them right now. Three points and two personals for Eldon Campbell. He is parked on the bench. You know, Derek Fisher, who's been relegated to the bench for the Lakers. Since yeah, but he's getting adding minutes. All these guys. He's getting minutes, and he's getting in there and playing. Uh... You know, again, it, it's a long way between now and the end of the season, and a lot of things can happen. And particularly with the Lakers, it could turn into a, a, a volatile situation, certainly with the uh, discord between Shaq and, and Kobe, which could explode. And, and any number of things could happen so that by the time the playoffs come, that question could be very relevant. Right now, I don't see... That it's it's uh, that any team has a, has a good shot against LA. Yeah, it's amazing. Nobody's got this much offensive firepower, and I guess as long as they continue to win, why would there be discord? Yeah, and they're playing well together, which is a key. Nice defense there, a steal by Ben Wallace. Again, it's Ben Wallace playing the passing lane, understanding where the ball is coming from. Devin George takes one right back from Billups, feeds Malone ahead of the pack, oh. lays it in. Yeah, Tom Malone. Getting a nice, easy layup. He uses his body to shield the defenders away and just lays it in. Those kinds of easy baskets kill you when you're trying to defend the Lakers. First Laker lead of the game. Coming under seven minutes to play in the first quarter. Emmett Oker bringing Shaq, Shaq away from yeah, the basket. You see Shaq coming away from the basket because he knows Oker can shoot the ball. Air ball with the shot clock running down for Hamilton. And the Lakers will take over. Phillips trying to say, hey, that hit the rim. I don't think so. <laughs> well, you look at the rafters for Detroit. They have, uh, obviously, some phenomenal players, including Hall of Fame. Now, those first two names right there, Dave Bing and Bob Lanier, those were two unbelievably terrific basketball players. Vinny Johnson next to that, not on that level, but helped the Pistons to two championships. Shaq pushed off in an offensive foul. And, you know, usually you say that that's, that's a flop by the defender. I'm not so sure that was a flop this time. Mehmet Okor is, is backtracking a little bit, and Shaq just knocked him down. I don't think that was a flop by Mehmet Okor. I think Shaq just knocked him down. First foul on O'Neal. Halfway through the first quarter. Phillips uses Oker for a screen. Drops it down to him. Oker cutting to the basket and foul. Another foul on Shaq. Yeah, Devin George in there saying, hey, it was me, but uh, we're not buying it. So O'Neal's got two. Mehmet Okor is, is a pretty active player offensively. He'll come out, set a pick, he'll roll to the basket. He's got pretty good hands, and he's got an idea on the offensive end of what kinds of shots he can get off. And there, good play by Chauncey Billups, draws Shaq a little bit, dishes down. Okor uses his body, draws the foul. So with 6.02 to play in the first... Shaq has picked up his second. So Eldon Campbell for the Pistons. Been on the bench for a while with two. O'Neal as well. Here's Mehmet Oker. You can see he's played much better at home. And has actually definitely stepped up his performance this year from last. Nine points, eight rebounds a game. Another chance. And Rip Hamilton. Yeah, it seems to me right now that the Lakers are not taking the Pistons as seriously as they should. 
many second chance opportunities for the Pistons. And when a team is focused and on their game like the Lakers should be, they don't give up those kinds of second chances. Kobe the miss, and we've got to correct ourselves here. Shaq has three fouls, so it's even worse. Shoot it, Ben. Instead gives off the Prince who blew the layup. That was a shot that Ben Wallace should have taken. I mean, he, he, he took that fall away. Why not take another one? Another rebound for Ben Wallace. Six in the game. Prince will try again. The lefty player, offensive foul. This has not been a good couple trips for Tayshaun Prince. No, that first one was a layup, a very makeable layup. As we look at Jamal Sampson coming in off that Laker bench, Sampson does not get a lot of run. Well, it's early in the game, and I think Phil Jackson a little reluctant to use Horace Grant too many minutes, but now we see Horace Grant in the ball game. Horace Grant, part of the first three Bulls championship teams. And uh, he actually never did get into this one, Jamal Sampson. He only has one prior appearance for the Lakers. Horace Grant comes in and hits a shot immediately. Lakers back on top. Chauncey Phillips working out front against Gary Payton. Hamilton with Kobe on him. Into Wallace, knocked away by Malone. Recovered by Payton, but he lost it and taken back by Wallace. Carlos Williams oh, nice. the game. Beautiful pass. and spun in by Phillips. And, and Gary Payton just sort of let Chauncey Phillips cruise down the lane without the ball. By the time he caught it, it was too late to catch up. Devin George hits the jumper. Two for two. Well, it should be a different approach by the Pistons defensively without Shaq in the lineup. They, uh, I'm sure, will have to uh, play the perimeter a little bit tighter. Tayshaun Prince in the post time, he lost it. This has been a tough stretch for Tayshaun Prince, for sure. George had a good look at the three. Long rebound to Phillips, pushing it ahead. And foul from behind by Devin George. Devin George has been making that kind of shot with regularity. He has been wide open for most of those jump shots. That's a nice give and go from Corliss Williamson to Chauncey Billups. Gary Payton just coming into your picture. Just sort of cruised once Billups gave that up. You see Rick Mahorn doing some broadcast work for the Pistons part of their first championship team not part of the second was left unprotected in the expansion draft you know we were talking before the broadcast uh, about tough guys versus bad guys Rick Mahorn was a tough guy and he was and no mistake about it he's and he's one of the nicest people off the court the friendliest guys he's terrific off the court but he will take your head off on the court. Kobe missing on the jumper. He's taken only two shots so now, far in the game. He's not in the flow of this game yet by any means. Hamilton. Rubs Russell off the screen. Tried to find Williamson. Now Hamilton will try the three. Hamilton doesn't take many threes, nor does he make many. And nice work there. On the reverse for Tremaine Folks, who's getting some early run. Yeah, Tremaine Folks has been in the league for a few years, mainly with the Clippers, and the Pistons picked him up just recently. He can score points in a hurry for you. Kobe into the lane, out for Pete on the drive. No look nice pass, look. Horace Grant blocked on the reverse by Cordis Williamson. Billups pushing it up, spinning into the lane, tried to find Williamson. It was broken up by Horace Grant. So some wild end-to-end -end action here in the first quarter. And a timeout on the floor at the Palace where the Pistons have the three-point lead over the Los Angeles Lakers. Celebrity Row has moved to the Palace? Not exactly. This guy's pretty good as a, as a Jack Nicholson look-alike. 
has some of the affectations now. Yeah, he is pretty good, isn't he? Closer you get. You know, I'm looking at him, but it's not Jack Nicholson. No, it's not. But he looks very good. He, he looks very close. It's certainly not Donald, Donald Sutherland. <laughs> that much we do know. A look at some of the leading rebounding duos. O'Neal and Malone averaging 22 combined. Ben Wallace and Mehmet Oker. And, of course, Oker doesn't even start. They average 21 between them. You got Jerome Williams and Antonio Davis for Toronto. And Carl Malone, very quietly, is averaging double-double for the Lakers. And... He's not the focal point, but he is getting it done. That he is. It is Pistons ball underneath the Detroit team. Dominating the boards at this point. Chauncey Billups stepped on the sideline, so the Pistons turn it over. Now Chauncey Billups has had some trouble getting untracked in this game, and I think a lot of that is Gary Payton's defense on him. And Friday night, Chauncey Billups lit up Gary Payton for, what, 29? Yeah. And uh, Mr. Payton has a reputation as a defensive stop. And he does. There's the Kobe turnaround. First basket of the game for Bryant. Well, they isolated Kobe on the right wing, gave him the ball, let him do his thing, and he was able to make the turnaround jump shot. An effort, an obvious effort to get Kobe into this game. And off to Hamilton. In between two defenders. Missed the tough hanger. That was a nice job, though, by Kobe Bryant. He didn't go, he didn't skirt around the pick. He went through the pick and got there. What a tough shot. What a tough shot by Gary Payton. Fading away from the basket. High up off the glass and in. He's made three of his four shots for six points. Ties him with Malone for team high honors. Corliss Williams is going in the lane. Everybody expected a whistle. It never came, so there was Corliss with a little easy one. Yeah, Horace Gray and Gary Payton both took, uh, took not dives, but flops and, and backed away after the contact. And even Corliss Williamson expected some sort of call. No call was there, so all Corliss Williamson had to do was lay the ball in. Take a look right here. Horace Gray and Gary Payton both fade away. And it caught Collis Williamson by surprise, too. <laughs> He's looking at the official for a call. No call. He says, okay, no call. I'll just lay the thing in. One point, Detroit lead. Brian in the lane sets up Grant for the open jumper. That won't go. Tipping the rebound to himself is Ben Wallace, who now has six boards on the game. Pull up jumper. Tayshawn Prince finally gets on the board. And Lindsey Hunter made that play. Penetrated a little bit and scooted the pass over to a wide open Tayshaun Prince for a mid, mid range jump shot. And the Pistons need to get Tayshaun Prince into this game. Brian and Brian Russell needs to get something going. This is his second straight season now where his production way down, just two points a game after playing last season with Washington. Brian Russell's a pretty good basketball player. He can score some, he's a very good defender. And he understands his role with this team. On the turnover. Malone on the baseline. Back out for Peyton. All the way to the near side for Brian Russell. Driving and is hammered. On the way in by Bob Sura. First foul of the game on Sura as the Pistons have gone to their bench in the backcourt. Join ESPN for the 2004 European qualifying matches. This week's match features Spain against Norway. Norway defeated Spain in the first round of Euro 2000, and Spain has reached the Euro quarterfinals on seven occasions. So check out Euro qualifying here this week on ESPN. Kobe Bryant taking a seat on the bench next to Shaquille O'Neal, who's got the three fouls left halfway through the first quarter with that third foul. Look at Brian Russell. Of course, played with Carl Malone all those years. Well, not all of those years. In Utah. But many of them. Yeah. It was a pretty good compliment to Carl Malone's inside game. Brian Russell moving, hitting the outside shot. And he, as I said before, he is a very good defender. Yep. The only guy who played with Carl Malone all of those years in Utah was John Stockton. And now neither of them play there. There's Prince. Takes it to the basket. He'll have a chance for a three-point play. Tayshawn Prince, as he proved in the playoffs a year ago, is an excellent one-on-one -on -one 
basketball player. He, he will isolate you and break you down, and he can take it to the rim. And being left-handed gives him an advantage, and he is so long and with such a long reach that he can score on those in-close shots. Darvin Ham has checked into the Pistons lineup up front off the bench. He's wearing the number eight jersey. Pistons now have put ten players into the game. The only two players we have not seen are Zelsko Robraka, who's injured, by the way, and Darko Milicic as the final seconds tick away in the first quarter. A little acupressure going on there for Ben Wallace, perhaps. Hopefully he's not injured. In any event, the first quarter is in the books at the Palace at all. And for the Nets, that is a three-point deficit right now in the hands of the Hornets. Let's get back to our game as we get ready to start the second quarter. A two-point advantage for Detroit. After one quarter of play, the real story in the first quarter. Pistons out rebounding. The Lakers, 14 to 5, and Shaquille O'Neal picked up three fouls, but he is in there to start the second. Uh, you know, once again, you, you've got to think, looking at those stats and the stats bear it, that the Lakers, the wake-up call hasn't gotten there yet and they are uh, they're on cruise control pretty much in this game against the Pistons Tayshaun Prince holding out high with Brian Russell on him, Oker comes for the screen and then spots up wants to go against O'Neal, fakes him up now gives it to Williamson who hits the little one in the lane now Mehmet Okor has enough moves to to get that fourth foul on Shaq but he's got to do a better job of, of attacking to pick up that, that fourth foul. And Shaq spins away from Oker, avoids the offensive, and drops it in. And Oker tried to, tried to draw that offensive foul. But Shaq really does have good footwork and, and quick feet. And he was very aggressive on that offensive move. Oker hits the jumper. And that time with Horace Grant defending him. I think the, the Lakers philosophy may be if Oker is on the perimeter, send Horace Grant after him, and if Oker plays in the low block, then Shaq will defend him. Oker will have to defend Shaq without a lot of help. Ben Wallace not in the game right now, and Shaq just takes it right on top of him. It's a, just a total mismatch right now. And Oker, the last two times trying to draw that offense pop. He's got to realize that he's, he's got his call. <laughs> yeah, and these are veteran officials, and they know that Shaq has fouls on him as well, and it's going to have to be a definite foul for Shaq to pick up that fourth. Mehmet Oker hits from just inside the arc, along two, back to a four-point lead. Elbow jumper is good for Horace Grant. See, when Shaq is scoring, as he has the last couple of times in the low block, it forces all five defenders to pay attention to him and at least to turn to see where he is. And it leaves those little baby mid-range jump shots open for every other Laker. Oker fading away, and it's a tough one over O'Neal. Well, he lost, he lost a little control of the basketball and had to fade away for it, making it a tough shot. Jumper won't go from on top for... Russell, good job. They got another shot at it, but here comes Lindsey Hunter. Four on two. Williamson will not get the roll and will get the offensive foul. Derek Fisher drew it, but is paying for it. He is, because uh, Coles Williamson is a load when he's coming down on the break. And to stand in there and take a charge, that's not an easy thing to do. And Derek Fisher does it, does it well. But as you said, he's paying the price. He is. Lakers ball down four. Three minutes gone in the second quarter. Brian Russell drives and kicks. Extra pass across to Fisher. Good ball movement. And he strokes the three. Now, if you notice, there were about three white shirts in the paint trying to defend Shaquille O'Neal. And with good ball movement by the Lakers... It opened up a wide open shot for Derek Fisher. Just a two, it turns out, for Fisher. Working inside, Corliss Williamson. Oh, he thinks he's back at Arkansas. Well, Look at him get it done inside. Big Nasty realizes that Shaq has the three fouls. 
and wasn't going to be there to help defend. Shaq cleaning up on the offensive glass. Well, Shaq running the floor and being in the right place at the right time. And now you see Shaq on the perimeter defending Oprah. A lob inside for Williamson, who draws a foul in between Russell and Grant. So Corliss Williamson has been active off the bench for the Pistons. He's got six points and three rebounds, and he's going back to the free throw line. Here's a look at the work inside by Corliss Williamson. Two-point lead for the Pistons. to be a good ball game here on NBA Tuesday on ESPN a two point lead for the Pistons over the Lakers 809 to play in the second quarter and the Turkish star Mehmet Oker having quite a first half he's, he's playing unafraid of Shaquille O'Neal trying to make Shaq pay on the defensive end and Oker can shoot the basketball and he's got some pretty good moves defensively he's struggling a little bit but uh, on the offensive end He's got a pretty good package. And, of course, Corliss Williamson, an undersized power forward, but he knows how to post up and how to score down low. So Oker has given the seven points and three rebounds off the bench. Corliss Williamson with six points and three rebounds off the bench. So they've done a fine job as Larry Brown has gone to those guys coming off the pine, and they have delivered for him. Well, Oker in his second year with the Pistons has really improved immeasurably. I mean, his confidence level is up. He understands more of what's expected of him. Uh, and he's he's delivering. He's rebounding well for the Pistons, and he, he is a scoring threat. Pistons getting the better of the bench play between the two teams as well as the rebounding battle. You saw a guy who's always responsible for that, Ben Wallace, on the bench with four points and six rebounds. Only one foul, though, so this is simply a breather. Well, that and the fact that Okor and Collis Williams sure. are playing very well. Brown in his first year with the Pistons and Bill Jackson his fifth with the Lakers. What he has done there are well chronicled. Three championships in his first three years and then did not happened for them last year. Well, Phil just won his 784th game as a coach which ties him for 11th place on the all-time list with Gene Shu. And he is trailing Cotton Fitzsimmons. And, of course, he has only nine more championships than Gene Shu. <laughs> <laughs> Jumper from the far side. Short for Kobe. But the Pistons couldn't control it. Went off the fingertips of Sura and then Lindsey Hunter. I think Kobe's in, in a stage right now where he needs to get shots off. And he's lo actively looking to get shots. One for four in 20 minutes of play for Kobe Bryant. Got it on top against Bob Sura. Gives to Grant. Cuts off him. Grant open from 19 and hits. Now obviously that play was designed to try to shake Kobe loose. Bob Sura did a very nice job defensively. Of course Grant had no other option but to take that jump shot. Good hands Good by hands. Fisher, who stole it away from Hunter. Up ahead for Kobe. Behind the back for Shaq. And he's fouled by Tayshawn Prince. O'Neal will get two free throws. Well, that's good, and that goes a long way for, the, for this Laker team, that, that Kobe would really look for Shaq on that break. Coming up on NBA Friday here on ESPN, Kevin Garnett and the Minnesota Timberwolves take their game on the road to Cleveland to take on LeBron James and the Cavaliers. It'll be an exciting matchup. Don't want to miss that one here on NBA Friday. You know, again, Mark, Kobe has been accused of a lot of things on the basketball floor in terms of being a little selfish and that play 
Now, proves that, that uh, Kobe wants to fit in with this team. And, and he could have very easily taken that shot himself. Yes, he could have, and, and oftentimes has. And yet he gave it up because he saw Shaquille O'Neal running the floor. Shaq gets one of two. He's got nine points in the game. Sura taking it to the basket. And a three-point advantage now. Under seven minutes to play in the first half. And Phil Jackson sees something he's not pleased with. Calls a timeout. Talk things over. The well-traveled Bobby Sura. Part of a fence contingent that is producing for the Pistons so far. They lead the Lakers in the second. Sent. That's pretty good. Lakers, yeah, not bad either. They're 56%. And Lakers really are a pretty good defensive team. And those stats just tell you that they're really not into this game as they should be. And what rebounds there have been in this game are being collected by the Pistons. 17-7 advantage on the glass. Kobe gives to Shaq in a post-up against Oker. Into the lane. Can't get the roll, but the putback by Devin George. And again, Shaq demands so much attention when he gets the ball in the paint that even if you're not in a help mode, even if you're not sagging to help, you tend to watch to see what he's going to do. And that time, Devin George took advantage by cleaning up the offensive glass. Oh. Offensive foul by Mehmet Okor. He had nowhere to go. Yeah, nice little fake gets by Shaq, but Devin George steps in to take the charge, and Shaq blocked the shot for good measure. Larry Brown incredulous at that call. There's a turnover story. The Pistons, nine. Nice tip back by Carl Malone. Eight points for the mailman, four rebound. I think you'll see Ben Wallace come back in the game pretty quickly because the Lakers have gotten a couple of offensive second chances. It has been a long rest. Rip Hamilton back in. Hits the leaner. The Lakers right back at it quickly, though. And an even quicker shot for Derek Fisher. Phillips creates space. Can't hit the pull-up. Jack the rebound, took it away from Fultz. More quick shots, but this one goes in for Devin George. Yeah, the, the shots are kind of quick from the perimeter, and you would think that if Shaq is getting up and down the floor, that they should pull it out a little bit and wait for him to get position down low, because obviously the Pistons are having trouble defending against Shaq. Hamilton takes it right at O'Neal. Last couple of times down, Rip Hamilton getting into the paint, shooting that little floater. Hamilton's got eight. Under five to play in the half. High post Malone. Gives to Fisher. Fisher off the Shaq screen. That's a problem. Shaquille O'Neal, the illegal screen, and now with four fouls. And I blame that really on Derek Fisher because all he had to do was pull the ball out on that left wing and drop it down to Shaq. Take a look right here. A Shaq, yeah, that's a foul. No need for Derek Fisher to, to, to put Shaq in that position. Derek Fisher should have just dribbled it out and made a nice entry pass to Shaq because Mehmet Okor was not going to be able to defend Shaq in the low block. Hamilton to Billups. Quickly to Fult. Open on the baseline. Good ball movement for the Pistons. Now that's something that a couple of years ago Chauncey Billups would not do. When he caught that pass back from Rip Hamilton, he would have taken the shot himself. Now, more mature Chauncey Billups found the open man, hit for main Fult for an easy jump shot. Somebody else hit Tremaine Fultz in a <laughs> unrepentance-looking mailman standing over him. He's saying, you okay? <laughs> Tremaine Fultz, I don't know if he's got, a, if he's got uh, the cobwebs shaking loose yet. And the foul is on Fultz. How about that? 
<laughs> Adding insult to yes. injury. Yes, a classic example. Still wondering what happened. That wasn't a mailman that hit me. That was a train. A mail truck. <laughs> and nobody takes better care of his body than Carl uh. Malone. I mean, he's still chiseled. At the age of 40. Fade away will not go for Carl Malone. Folks had enough wits about him to get the rebound. <laughs> Ben Wallace back in. Hands for Hamilton. Hamilton in trouble and throws it away. Ten turnover. Good defense that time by the Lakers. Stayed with Rip Hamilton and forced him into throwing the ball away. I believe that was Kobe who was defending Rip Hamilton on that play. Hamilton went for the steal. No good for George. Tremaine Folks. Uh, Tremaine Folks ran the floor. And he's got some pretty good speed. Good awareness by Chauncey Billups. Seeing that, laying it up there with a nice alley-oop for an easy lay-in. This is the largest lead of the game for either team. Lakers have never led by more than two. Five-point Piston lead. Courtesy of a 6 nothing run over the last minute plus. Kobe leaning in. Cannot get the roll, but the ball bounces back to him. But Tremaine, folks, with a nice defensive effort on Kobe that time. He didn't go for the fake. He held his ground, forced Kobe into a tough shot. Devin George. Move it, move it. That's one way to move it. Well, towards that's, the basket. that's the wrong way to move it, though. Gary Payton bails him out, working the offensive glass. And Chauncey Billups brings it across half court. Larry Brown wants a timeout for the Pistons. Battling against a loaded Laker squad that has come to town. It's been a great first half for Detroit. They've got the three-point lead. What does all that mean? Find out on Sports Center in game. Look at Ben Wallace. What he has done is a defensive player of the year. Not leading the league in rebounding at the moment, which is news in itself. Yeah, but he'll be there at the end. Because he is <laughs> relentless on the boards. Chauncey Billups. Takes it home. Nobody else touched it, and Billups converted. He didn't have a whole lot of help offensively on that. That was all Chauncey Billups. And he made a circus shot. 2.20 to play in the second quarter. Malone open on top. Forced it down, looking for Kobe, who was completely covered. Well, it's a rare sight that when Carl Malone goes yep. up to shoot that jump shot, he actually passes it off. No reason to, was it? And uh, caught, the, caught the Kobe Bryant and the rest of the Lakers by surprise. And Wallace goes for the turnaround. Way short. Gary Payton. Works it. Sura. Gives to Kobe. Kobe hanging. Blocked by Wallace. But Jess Kersey has called a foul. Could be on Billups. Yeah, I don't think it's on Ben Wallace. I think it was on Billups from behind. Yeah, right there. You saw the, the swooping arm of Chauncey Billups. And he must have caught Kobe Bryant, obviously, because Kobe's at the line. First foul on Phillips. At that point, Ben Wallace saying, hey, Chauncey, I don't need that. Let him shoot it. I had him. <laughs> Probably did. Field goal attempts down by eight shots a game for Kobe Bryant. Well, with the addition of, of Peyton and Malone, really, that's the yeah. way it should be. Yep. Have Shaq and Kobe average around 20. Yep. Peyton and Malone, 14, 15 each, which is what they're doing now. And uh, they're winning 80% of the time. That's pretty much going to be good enough. That's right. As long as they come to play, as long as they're in the ball game mentally. And that's where they've had problems tonight. John C. Billups. It's the three. It's the first three of the game for anybody. A nice penetration by Gary Payton back at you. 
before the Pistons were able to get settled back on the defensive end. Coming up on a minute left. High post for Wallace. Almost turned it over, and he did. Well, there's no such thing anymore as a force out, which that play actually was, and it's either got to be a foul or an out of bounds. Here you see Chauncey Billups gets that ball, and a little bit of a force out, a little bit of contact, not enough for a foul. Chauncey didn't like it. Got a technical for rolling the ball slowly down to the other end of the floor. And Kobe Bryant converts that. Well, see, you're just supposed to hand the ball to the nearest official. Plain and simple. Of course, you're talking about a game where emotions get involved. And it's a play. A little bit of pressure by the Pistons. Handled by the Lakers. Malone. Working against Williamson. Out to Kobe. Missed the three. Guess who got the rebound? Yeah, the guy who usually gets it. He's only got seven tonight. Bringing the ball all the way down the floor, going all the way to the hoop. Got it back. Out the miss. Knocked away by the quick hands of Carmelo. Last touch by the Pistons. And the Lakers will get it. The crowd hates it. Carmelo does such a good job, and he has for years and years, of reaching in and slapping the ball away before the shooter can get the ball up above his head. Yeah, it is incredible how quick those hands yeah. are. Payton sets up Grant. Rather a loose ball foul against Carl Malone. It's not very often that, that Ben Wallace gets knocked off the play. As big and strong as he is. Against number 11, Carl Malone. Well, you remember the NBA draft in June? Carmelo, How LeBron. How could we forget it? The number two pick was Darko Milicic, and Mr. Milicic has yet to score an NBA point. In fact, he's appeared in only four games. And, it, and in those four games, he's only played 11 minutes. And that is Larry Brown wanting to go with veteran players. He's got a good team here in Detroit, and he is not real anxious to integrate a young 18-year-old big guy who doesn't have his game together yet. There's no rush for the Pistons, who are a contender in the East. And uh, Milicic right. is yeah. being not not even being fed minutes slowly. He's he's not just yet. not even anywhere near the rotation. In yeah. fact, every player on the Pistons has played tonight, except for Darko Milicic. And, uh, you know, Carmelo Anthony in Denver and LeBron James, force-fed minutes because their teams absolutely need them. It's not that situation here in Detroit. Like I said, they've got a good team. They've got Eldon Campbell. They've got Ben Wallace. They've got Mehmet Okor. They've got some big guys who can play. Corliss Williamson. Just aren't enough minutes for Dr. Milicic. Final seconds of the half for the hammer down from Ben Wallace. Nicely set up play, too, by the Pistons. John C. Billups seems like he knew exactly where he wanted to go. Hey, he penetrates. Draws the defense, dishes down to a wide open Ben Wallace, and that's a pretty high percentage shot. And Big Ben is tolling at the Palace. 